Firstly, I'd like to thank all of you for taking some time out of your busy days, busy schedules and coming and joining us for this program, the launch of the second ICT policy ever since the formation of Telangana as a state. As you're all aware, Telangana is one of the youngest, in fact, the youngest state and the, one of the fastest growing states in the country. I'd like to particularly extend uh, special thanks and gratitude to Srimati Rekha Menon for joining us, for taking the time out, Rekha. Really appreciate, uh, uh, you know, your time and your efforts in joining us today. I know this is your first uh, time out uh, after 18 months, so thank you. Thank you for coming to Hyderabad and joining us. Just to put things in perspective, you know, before I talk about the policy or the highlights or the sector or the industry and the technologies, I think I'd like to spend a couple of minutes on how well Telangana has done in the last seven years. If you just look at uh, the gross state domestic product, GSDP as we call it, in 2021 it was 9.78 lakh crores and compare this to 2013 and 14, it was around 5 lakh crores. So literally the GSDP of the state has nearly doubled and uh, in fact it is much much higher than the national average growth rate. The share of Telangana's economy in national GDP, I keep saying, you know, we punch above our weight. If you look at Telangana as a state, we are 11th largest in terms of population. We are 12th largest in terms of geographical size. But in terms of our contribution to the GDP, Telangana today is the fourth largest contributor to the national economy. And this is not me saying it. This is a report released by the Reserve Bank of India yesterday that uh, has reinforced our belief and our point. More importantly, let me also point out that in terms of population and the overall country, we are about 2.5% if you look at the country as a whole. Our Telangana's population is about 4 crores. India's population is nearly 135 crores. But if you look at the GDP contribution, a 2.5% popula population is contributing to 5%, which is literally the double of what our size is. More importantly, I think uh, another very telling statistic, which kind of tells you the growth story of Telangana. When we started our journey in 2013 and 14 as a state, the per capita income of a citizen in Telangana was 1 lakh, sorry, in fact, it was. Uh, 94,000 I think it was subject to correction but now the state's per capita income of citizen is 2,27,145 which is significantly higher compared to the national average. The national average is about 1,27,768 so we are nearly 100,000 rupees above the national average. Over the last one year Telangana once again has boosted of a phenomenal growth in the IT and IT enabled services sector thanks largely to the group gathered here in the room with an increase of 12.98% in exports over the previous year in spite of the pandemic, in spite of uh, all the problems that we had to go through. Just to put things in perspective in terms of export numbers, when we started our journey in 2013-14, the IT export numbers were at about 57,000 crores of rupees. But now, as of last year, they are about 1,45,000 crores of rupees. We have seen more than double and we have, we have of course been much, much growing at a much faster rate than the national average. Back in 2016, as was pointed out by Jayesh Ranjan, my uh, principal secretary, we have decided to announce a very progressive, forward-looking, forward-thinking ICT policy in the overall, uh, you know, with overall guiding guidance by our Honorable Chief Minister, Shri K. C. R. Garu. In the last five years, between 2016 and 2021, I'm glad to say that the IT ENC department has been successful at meeting the goals that we have set for ourselves in policy 2016. But as you all know, every government is elected for five years, and so are the policies. You know, we typically have a five-year policy. So we had to come out with some revisions, with some... Um, with some newer ideas with this new policy that we have launched today. We have not only been able to achieve the goals that we have set for ourselves, we have also had a strong positive impact 
on the policy making at national level and thanks largely again to our investors, to the citizens, to the stakeholders who have been involved in this brilliant growth story. Over the last five years, as I pointed out, the state has passed several milestones in the IT and electronic sectors, not only in terms of the growth, but also in adaptation to the public, to the citizens. Telangana has seen the highest annual growth rate in IT sector in the country uh, in, the last, in terms of export numbers in the last five years and has created more than 2.5 lakh jobs in this sector and in spite of the pandemic again. As Amar pointed out, in the last five to six years, we've had several marquee investors. You know, we hear these, I keep saying this to a lot of uh, potential investors when I meet them. If you look at the top five most valued technology companies in the world, all five of them, without an exception, have their second largest base outside of their headquarters in our own city of Hyderabad today. And this marquee list includes Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, Amazon, and Google. Now, yes, of course, and we have all of these brands uh, right up there. Uh, let me also quickly point out, excepting Microsoft, which has set uh, its office here in Hyderabad, which has set up its office in Hyderabad, and back in 2001-2, all other four have come to Telangana in the last five to six years. Not only these top five most valued tech companies, we also have a marquee list of names, Micron, Uber, and we have uh, you know, very interesting companies in BFSI. Just as of a couple of days back, when JP Morgan Chase has set up its uh, largest APAC office in Hyderabad, Goldman Sachs has opened a very large facility in Hyderabad, and I, that list goes on. In fact, Mass Mutual, State Street, PepsiCo, Intel, the list goes on. More importantly, what I'm very upbeat about is also the electronic sector, manufacturing. You know, Honorable Prime Minister talks about making in India. Honorable Chief Minister of Telangana is very keen to get that manufacturing piece to our state. Electronic sector in Telangana saw more than 1.5 lakh jobs being created and now we are responsible for production of nearly 7% of electronics output in the country and that is constantly growing. We have also recently announced the electric vehicle policy and we have been seeing significant traction even in this space. We have developed a robust innovation ecosystem consisting of T-Hub, the Telangana State Innovation Cell, the Women Entrepreneurs Hub called as V-Hub and one important thing that uh, BVR Mohan Reddy Garu spoke about the strong collaboration that is required between industry and academia. We have made a sincere effort in the form of RICH, the Research and Innovation Circle of Hyderabad. But I take your point, sir. I think a lot more needs to be done. I certainly agree with you there. And of course, the Telangana Academy for Skill and Knowledge task and the largest prototyping facility in the country, to soon to be unveiled, called as the T-Works. The Emerging Technologies Wing, headed by Ramadevi Garu, and Image Center of Excellence, which stands for Innovation in Animation, Gaming, Multimedia and Entertainment. All of these together, in fact, uh, more than 1,500 startups have received support in the form of mentorship, incubations and industry connects and have raised more than 1,800 crores of rupees in funding over the last five years. I know this number looks small, but I think uh, this is just the beginning from uh, where we have started to where we have uh, uh, reached, I think it's a significant uh, uh, journey. More than 3 lakh skilled professionals have been created through programs from TASC that have been designed in partnership with the industry. And I take uh, the, the point made by Sri BVR Mohan Reddigaru and of course strongly reinforced and endorsed by Rekha Menon about the need to focus on education and more importantly skilling. We have taken note of that, Madam, myself and Jayesh Ranjan, and we will work with both NASCOM and also our local industry partners here to ensure that we create a furthermore, even more robust skilling, uh, you know, uh, program. Task, in fact, also has one of the highest placement rates in the country for a government-backed skilled program. More than 500 government services are available electronically over Mi Seva, and over 250 are available over phones through the T-App folio. MeSeva has been exemplary in bringing the government closer and more accessible for the citizens and has inspired other cities and also other countries, in fact. Telangana has made rapid strides in the e-governance space. 
In fact, uh, we've also won several awards for our smart government initiatives like RTDAI and the digital verification of beneficiaries which have been launched. Just to give you a sense of what e-governance can do for a citizen in Telangana, on a Sunday in Telangana today, you can get your driver's license uh, renewed sitting in the comforts of your home using a smartphone. That's how, you know, uh, adaptive we've been with respect to our e-governance initiatives. Several new and growing technologies have been taken up by the emerging technologies wing in the state of Telangana. Over the last five years, sectoral policies have been developed and launched for open data, blockchain, data analytics, artificial intelligence, cyber security, cloud adoption, and e-waste management. All of these have been taken up. In fact, uh, in partnership with uh, leading global organizations such as the World Economic Forum, the United Nations Development Program, the World Bank, we have leveraged these partnerships and engagements to make Telangana leader in emerging technology space. Through the Digital Telangana Initiative, we have been able to make the digital world more accessible to the citizens of Telangana. More than 3,000 public Wi-Fi access points have been established in the city of Hyderabad and this is now also being expanded to other cities. More than 5 lakh citizens have been trained to be digitally literate, literate in the state, especially from rural backgrounds. Hyderabad has also been rated as a city with the best quality of living by Mercer on the livability index for five years in a row now from 2015 until 2020 and we hope and to continue this uh, you know, momentum. We have also been rated by JLL as the most dynamic city in the world and that also reflects in the growth of our real estate industry and house construction industry in the city of Hyderabad. Let me also point out that uh, you know, our Honorable Chief Minister constantly reminds us, constantly guides us and constantly reinforces his point that any technology which does not have a societal impact, a positive societal impact, any technology who does not, which does not you know, uh, uh, take away the pain points of a common man, of a, of a citizen, is futile. So therefore, we have adopted, we have, you know, we have looked at the pain points within the various government departments, and we have tried to engage and we have tried to imbibe a lot of that into the new policy that has been launched today. We believe that uh, the citizens need to get better employment opportunities, better access to technology, and overall, a better quality of life, which can be enabled, leveraging IT. And today, if you ask me, IT is not just information technology anymore. IT is intelligent technologies. In fact, IT can enable, can make the citizen's life much, much better. We've also looked at the digital divide among the citizens from different backgrounds. Because unless we address it, that divide will continue to grow. We've, in fact, made a very conscious effort to provide equal opportunities and support from the government by creating a level playing field. The technology world, as we all know, is dynamic and ever evolving. A five-year period is ideal for us to rejuvenate our goals and reinforce and rethink our approach sometimes. The COVID-19 pandemic has been devastating for many of us, but also has provided us with an opportunity to accelerate the adoption of technology across sectors. We have seen how schools have adopted to online classes. We have seen how hospitals and primary health care centers have had to adopt to telemedicine and e-medicine. It is also equally important to benchmark ourselves against the world's leading countries in ICT adoption and benefit from their learnings to leapfrog ahead of competing technologies and competing economies in terms of innovation, in terms of in investment attraction potential as well. Our primary objective that we have set out to achieve with the second ICT policy is to empower and enable the citizens of the state belonging to all backgrounds to take advantage of the growing digital world, from being able to use basic smartphone applications to be able to work on advanced technologies. We will enable citizens to live a better digital life. As my colleague, my principal secretary, Jayesh Ranjan has already briefed you on the initiatives that Telangana will take up in the next, years, next few years to come. I would like to reinforce and let you know that the government will put in maximum efforts to give citizens what they deserve to realize the vision of our Honorable Chief Minister. The government will make citizens familiar with digital opportunities and ensure that citizens are in a position to take advantage of technology in their day-to-day -day lives. The government will continue to improve the service delivery mechanisms 
and public interaction through technology and enhanced digital skills. Telangana will be transformed to be the first choice destination for startups and investors and the government will promote impact-driven solutions. The state will facilitate investments and create jobs in the information technology product engineering and research and development fields to emerge as a leader in this country. Several initiatives and the implementation mechanisms for them have been identified and incorporated into the policy to achieve the goals that have been set. A truly contactless, paperless and presenceless government will be created with 100% of government services being made available over the web and on mobile applications except in cases that mandate physical presence like driving license tests. The government will ensure that at least one individual in each household and self-help groups is digitally made literate and is given access to the advantage of the digital ecosystem. Over 12,000 digital Telangana centers will be set up at the panchayat level to provide digital services to citizens even in the remotest of locations. Basic artificial intelligence training will be provided for all technology graduates to be prepared for the next wave of employment creation with the advent of newer technologies. The state will set up, together with the private sector, a startup fund worth Rs. 1300 crores and a government investment committee will, with a goal to support over 8000 startups and making Telangana the top choice for startups in the country. Telangana will also develop IT and ITES sector to reach over 3 lakh crores in IT exports over the next 5 years and will reach over 10 lakh employees in the IT sector. Over 50,000 jobs shall be generated in the IT and ITES sector in the tier 2 and tier 3 cities in the state establishing them as IT hubs of the future. Some effort has already been made and thanks to BVR Mohan Reddigaru and also CP Gurnani of Tech Mahindra for launching their centers in Warangal. We look forward to more and more of these uh, enterprises. I know TCS is the largest employer in the state of Telangana. I look forward to TCS, Wipro, Infi and of course Accenture and all the other IT majors who are assembled in the room here today to also start looking at tier 2 and tier 3 cities for further expansion, further opportunities. There will also be a special focus on electric vehicles, battery storage systems, consumer electronics, medical devices and automotive sectors and we believe that a really truly self-reliant India can only be accomplished with not only good policy support but also with active engagement directly with the states within the country. We believe that we can attract more than 75,000 crores of investment and create more than 3 lakh jobs in the electronic sector in the next 5 years. The Telangana Emerging Technologies Corridor shall be launched as a hub of centers of excellence or technology centers and will be a platform for providing institutional support, thought leadership, promoting research and development and innovation in the latest trends in technology. Telangana will be established as a leader in technology-based governance through the creation of, a data creation of the data stack, a data analysis wing and promotion of ethical usage of emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence, machine learning and blockchain in government services also. The government will use its patented and homegrown technology solutions to support businesses, MSMEs and other states in the country. A dedicated smart cities wing will also be created in collaboration with the Municipal Administration and Urban Development Department with the aim to create over 40 smart regions in the state benchmarking with the best smart cities in the world. Once again, thank the chief guest of the occasion today, Srimati Rekha Menon. I also would like to extend my sincere gratitude to the Consul General of uh, United States of America uh, you know, in Hyderabad, Joel Reifman, Sri BVR Mohan Redigaru, Rajanagaru, to Venkateshwara Garu and of course our uh, newly appointed uh, Commissioner of Police in the Cyberabad region, Mr. Shrifan Ravindra Garu. And of course I would be remiss not to mention the contribution of uh, my Principal Secretary, my partner in crime, Jayesh Ranjan Garu, for his unstinted and uh, lovely support over the last six years. Thank you once again and have a great day. Thank you.